There are certain types of movements that are essential to many games which are quite hard to implement with Unreal Engine. Most of you are probably familiar with how to make a character walk, launch a character and maybe even know how to apply knockback. But not many people know how to properly implement movements like evasive steps and dodge rolls, sliding attacks, smooth pushing on dealing damage, airborne moves that cover a set amount of distance and many more. In this video I'll present you a solution that is extremely versatile and works perfectly for all of these scenarios and also works for 2D and 3D games at the same time. Most tutorials will tell you to use the launch character node for something like this, but you'll have to set the force value to a crazy high number to work against ground friction. However, if used next to a ledge or while airborne, your character will be launched into orbit, so this isn't a great solution. I already covered this topic in the past and came up with a solution using timelines and directly applying velocity, and even though this was better than using launch character, I still wasn't that satisfied with the result. The solution I found this time around though I'm very happy with and it's actually also being used in the Lyra sample project which was created by Epic Games themselves, so we can trust this method. It uses a node called apply root motion constant force which allows you to first and foremost set the world direction and the strength of the movement. It also allows you to set the velocity after finishing which means that you can decide if your character comes to a standstill after or keeps the momentum. You can also set if you want to have gravity enabled or not. Something like Genji Swift Strike for example would ignore gravity. The best part about it in my opinion though is that you can pass a curve for strength over time. This allows you to for example create a slide that starts out fast and gradually slows down. Having a way to cancel this movement is also crucial because you might end up getting stunned or dying while you're in the movement. So using this node is by far the cleanest and most feature rich solution for these kind of movements. There is only one issue though, this node doesn't exist in Unreal Engine projects by default since it's part of the Gameplay Ability System. The Gameplay Ability System or GAS is an official and free plugin made by Epic Games for building attributes and abilities. However it has quite a steep learning curve and is a bit annoying to set up. So it would be too much work to implement it in your project just for the purpose of using this one node. Luckily though Unreal Engine makes it easy to create your own blueprint nodes through C++ so I decided to dig through the code to figure out if it's possible to recreate this node in a way that doesn't rely on gas, so that it can be used in all projects. And I managed to succeed at that after a lot of trial and error. Looking at the code taught me that aside from the gas related things, all this function really does is create a root motion source object with the parameters we pass it and then call the apply root motion source function on the character movement component. Sadly this function is not exposed to blueprints so I ended up creating a C++ function and packaged it in a small plugin which then allows us to use this function everywhere. As a patron you can just download the plugin I created from this and start using this node in your game right away without having to go through the excruciating process of making a C++ plugin. However if you want to try to create this by yourself stay tuned and I'll give you some guidance. Getting the basic functionality working was actually quite easy, but getting an uncompleted pin, an unfailed pin and also a way to cancel the operation at the same time was extremely hard. And it took me about a week of trial and error and scouring through hundreds of 5 year old forum and blog posts. The first step for making a C++ plugin is to just create a new project. I like to use the third person project because it allows me to test while implementing the plugin. And make sure it's a C++ project. You then want to go to edit plugins and click on add here. We want to create a blank plugin so click here and the name is very important if you want to copy paste some parts of my snippet so keep the same name as me which is root movement and yes the rest you don't have to worry about and click on create plugin. This is going to take a while. Once the plugin is created you should be able to look it up here look for root movement and yeah you can see it here it's just a blank plugin. And then we want to go to tools and new C++ class. And the one we want isn't in the common classes, but it's in all classes only. And here we look for cancelable and get the cancelable async action. And what this is, is it creates a base for an action that can be delayed because we want to have the unfinished node, the unfailed node. But we also want to have the ability to cancel this. For example, if we get stunned during the movement, we need to cancel the entire movement. So this is the best base we can use. And then just click on next. And here again, the name is very important. But first of all, here on the right side, in my case, the entire Unreal Engine project is called plugin creation. So this would just create it inside of the Unreal Engine project, but we want to create it inside of the plugin. So you need to select the root movement runtime here. 
and then you can see here it goes into the uh, root movement plugins root movement source folder so this is correct and again the name here is very important if you want to copy paste some of my snippets so make sure to also call it async root movement just like me and then again click on create class this is going to take a while and the live coding window should then show up to compile the code we just created and yeah live coding succeeded and your visual studio should then pop up and you can see here the async root movement cpp file and the async root movement h file which have been generated and this is where the hard part starts so it took me a week of a lot of trial and error to figure out what i'm actually supposed to do here I found a great article on Michele's game blog, which I'm going to link in the description, which actually showed me how this works. Um, so yeah, uh, this shows you the entire process of how you can use the cancelable async action base to create a node that has the uncompleted event, the async action, which you can cancel and all those kind of things. And this just creates a simple delay node as an example. And yeah, this taught me a lot, but it still wasn't enough. I still had to combine this with uh, the entire movement logic that comes from gas. And when it comes to C++ with Unreal Engine, there's often no documentation. And the only way to figure out how things work is to actually look at the source code of Unreal Engine, which I'm going to teach you how to do here. Uh, so you first want to find your installation of Unreal Engine. And this is the default path is C, Program Files, Epic Games. And then you have the different versions. And it doesn't really matter because GAS has been around for a while. So if you have an, a pretty old version of 4, that is fine. Uh, or any version of Unreal Engine 5. But you could just use 5.2 like I'm doing here and just go into the folder then go into engine and here we have the plugins folder open this up and here we then want to look for runtime yeah so in the engine plugins runtime and in here we have the gameplay abilities and yeah so this is all the code for the gameplay ability plugin uh, actually we can go into source here as well and we then want to open this up in the editor so you can just right click here if you have VS Code installed, which is uh, my preferred um, code editor, but anything works that has a search functionality. Um, but yeah, in my case, just right click open with code. And this then shows us uh, the folders here and all the files. But the best way of finding this is to just go to search and we know the name of the node. So we can just uh, look for apply root motion constant force yeah and so we have a lot of files here that show up so it's yeah the ability task apply root motion constant force cpp and the header file and yeah we can just click one of these and this actually shows us the function that we're looking for the one that shows up if you use uh, gas inside of unreal engine and yeah you can look at the code here and um yeah this one where it says shared init and apply is what actually runs if you uh, call the function from blueprints but you can see there's a lot of stuff here that is just gas related uh, a lot of that stuff here doesn't have anything to do with the movement itself but you can see here where we check for if movement component uh, we just set like a force name is additive world direction duration like all of the pins that you can see on the blueprint node are here so you can see that it takes these and applies them to the node and then the most important part is here where we have the movement component and call apply root motion source. This is what actually happens. So on the character movement component, there is this function apply root motion source, which sadly we cannot access from blueprints, but can from C++. So all this does it, it gathers up the information it needs and then just pushes this object into the apply root motion source function. So we know that this is what we also want to achieve with our custom function, but we need to use that together with our cancelable async action base. And if you have some experience with C++, you might be able to pull this off uh, by yourself at this point, just from the information I've given you. But if you're still a beginner, I also have the code up on the Unreal Engine community, so you can just copy paste it. So I have the uh, async movement h file here, and yeah, you can see it's pretty long. And also the cpp file here. And here you can see what the node will look like in the end. Uh, so yeah, first step, just uh, go to the uh, async movement h file and copy full snippet. And then here in the async movement h, just uh, select everything, control V and replace it. And yeah, 
So this is why the name is important because if you have a different name here for the plugin, it's gonna crash, it's not gonna work. And also if you have a different name for the node here, it's not gonna work with the copy pasted code. And then the same for the CPP file. Down here for async movement CPP, just copy the full snippet and again, select everything, control V, put it in here and save. Right. And well, let's first look at what this actually does because it's uh, quite a lot to understand. So yeah, by default, we only have these three imports from the async action base, but we also need the character movement component and the root motion source so that we can uh, use certain functions and uh, variables in here. And yeah, so what we do first is here declare a dynamic multicast delegate f movement event. And this is basically uh, what allows us to have the on finished and the on failed event because they don't happen instantly. So it's basically like an event which we can trigger later on. And we further set this up here. So yeah, we have the delegate here for on complete and also the delegate here for on fail. Yeah, don't mind the underlines because this is the sad state we're still in with Unreal Engine in Visual Studio where it doesn't understand what we're doing, but this is fine. It's gonna compile. And yeah, we also have all the other um, variables here that we need. Uh, so the context world, the delay, this is for our delay that allows us to cancel the node. Uh, we have the character movement component, which you of course need direction strength, like all of the pins of the information that we wanna put into this node. And the cool thing with these kind of nodes with uh, the async action is that it actually saves the state. So the state is saved inside of the node, so you can use it in different functions and points during this uh, node. And then yeah, at the bottom we have our function, the async root movement function. Well, but the display name is apply root motion constant force with callbacks. Uh, this is what's gonna show up in the blueprint. And yeah, so in the meta we have the world context, so it automatically gets it. Um, yeah, and some keywords here. And also important for an async action base is that the activate event, we're gonna override this and also the cancel function, we're gonna override this. And yeah, so in the C++ file, again, we have this function that we wanna call. Um, yeah, first it just checks if the world, we have the context of the world. Uh, then we just set all of the things on the node, set all the variables up here. And then we have the activate function. So here, yeah, we get the world, get a reference to the world again like it is also done in gas we just create the constant force object and yeah check for gravity in that case set a flag on here and then yeah just check if the character movement exists because we want to call this on the character movement we cannot call this without it and yeah so in that case we have the character movement apply root motion source and one important thing is we save the root motion source id which we also have as a variable here here, the root motion source ID. So like I said, we can save the state inside of this node. So on activate, if we call this function and save the root motion source ID, it is actually available to us on cancel as well. So here you can see we then call remove root motion source by ID and use the same ID to cancel the movement that is already active. Um, yeah, and then in the end here, we just have a timer manager. So this is just a timer with the duration that is ticking so then we know when to call the on um, completed event or we have to cancel this in case that there's an issue and we get stunned or something else but yeah this is our timer that we set up and then yeah on cancel again we just check for the delay uh, then cancel the movement and then make sure that the timer is being cleared and this is pretty much everything this does to compile all of this uh, we have to hold Control alt and f11 and this is just gonna compile all of our code and make it available. And as you can see, live coding was successful. So this means that I can now go into uh, content, third person, blueprints, uh, the BP third person character. And in here, let's just go to begin play. And here I can right click and apply root motion constant force with callbacks, which is the node that we created. And yeah, you can see we have the on completed, we have the on fail. And we also have the async action where we can call cancel on to cancel it if needed. Uh, of course, not from here, but if you have like a stun event, then from the stun event, you go into the cancel here, for example. But yeah, let's just try this. So from the begin play, go here and we have to get the character movement component here, drag it in and world direction. So here, the easiest is just get actor forward vector to move forward. I can just delete this and strength, let's just say 1000. 
and duration for two seconds. And here, yeah, we have additive, we have strength over time where we can pass some uh, curves in here. Uh, we have the velocity on finish, uh, clamp velocity, enable gravity, a lot of stuff going on here that we can do. And yeah, so let's just try this out. Compile and save and go here and I start the game. And yeah, the character is moving forward for like two seconds and then the movement stops. So this is working. And for example, what happens if we don't pass the character movement, um, we can print from fail, let's say fail. And yeah, because we don't have the character movement, nothing is gonna work out and this is why it fails. Uh, on the other hand, if we go to on complete, print string from here, uh, say completed, and just put the character movement back in here, just like this. And go here and you see it prints completed on the top left so yeah all of this is working nicely and let me just show you the cancel as well um so this is two seconds so let's just have a delay here of one second and here call cancel like this uh yeah like this and well i'll just do this to show you that it's not completing so here say complete and here we can say cancelled. So let's go. And yeah, you can see after one second cancelled and the complete doesn't fire because we clear the timer. So if we cancel it properly, the on complete will never be called. The on fail will also never be called if we just cancel here. So yeah, I hope this shows you how powerful this is. Of course, it's going to take a while, like playing around with all these values to get it exactly the way you want, but this gives you so much power and I hope you understand that. So the last thing that is necessary now that it works here is to actually package the plugin. So to package the plugin, we have to go to edit plugins and look for our root movement like this and just click on package and then find a folder. I, of course, already have it here and I'll just make another one for testing test root go in here and package the plugin so again this is going to take a couple of minutes probably then you just have to find the folder here you then just have the folder with your plugin you can see the u plugin everything here and you just want to copy the entire folder and find one of the projects you want to use it in once you're inside a project folder you want to look for the plugins folder if it doesn't exist yeah just right click new folder and call it plugins and in here you can just paste the plugin in and then restart the game that you just put it in and this is all you need and then you should be able to just use the same type in the same note like apply root movement constant force and it's going to show up in all of your games and you can just reuse this note in all of your games you just did the work once and you saved yourself a lot of time so i hope you make good use of this and again, if you found this hard to follow along or something didn't work out, you can just get the plugin from Patreon. And as always, thanks to my amazing patrons for supporting videos like this. 